you touched on a couple of points here that, you know, we could go on and on that are very, very close to my, you know, kind of my rap, if you will, this idea of the, the filtering effect, Aldous Huxley first articulated it, that it was the reducing valve, ordinary consciousness. You're absolutely right. Is only possible because of these filtering mechanisms and, and the current buzzword in neuroscience is the default mode network, you know, and this is a set of sort of mechanisms that keep us within the certain realm of ordinary consciousness, you know, essentially, because if you know, so it, 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 it is the, I like to call it the reality hallucination, you know, in a certain way, because the reality hallucination is something that the brain takes in information from the outside, processes that with associations and memories and all sorts of things inside, you know, inside, outside, these terms are very tricky, but for the moment we can use them and it comes up with a model of reality and the model of reality is an impoverished model. And the reason it is, is because it's, there have been all these selective filters applied because if everything came through, you'd just be a blooming buzzing confusion. So the brain selectively filters what comes in, constructs a comprehensible model of reality. That's what we call the default mode network or, or the reality hallucination. It is a model. It's not reality. Reality is, is out there somewhere, but it, it's some sort of, you know, representation of reality that makes it possible for us to, to, you know, function. What psychedelics do is they temporarily disable the default mode network. They just blow it apart, you know, and your model of reality collapses and all of this information can then come in and be experienced and is accessible. And that can be very scary, but it can also be very useful because, you know, in this default mode network, habitual behaviors and, and, and thoughts and so on can become, can become installed and you can get into feedback loops that are destructive, you know, that really need to be blown away. And that's what the psychedelics can do. It's literally, I think in very much ways, it's, it's literally like rebuilding, rebooting your computer. You know, you know how your computer can get all glitched up and it runs slower and there are problems and so on. You reset that thing and it runs smoother. The same thing goes on with the psychedelics, you know, and because the default mode network, you know, the brain and the body, the, the brain is going to, it's going to reestablish itself. It's going to fall back together. You're not destroying it. You know, it's, it, you've temporarily disabled it, but that equilibrium will re reestablish itself and it will reestablish itself in a way that a lot of the clutch that was built of has, has been eliminated. So it runs more smoothly, literally. And, and I think the fact I think the therapeutic utility of psychedelics is that because they let you step out of this reference frame, they let you step out of this personal reference frame and look at your issues from a different perspective temporarily. So your depression, your PTSD, your addiction, whatever the problem is, and very, and of course, you know, it's usually a complex picture. Usually if you're depressed, you know, you, there are other things going on. They don't happen just one thing, but it lets you look at whatever is sitting to your, to your unhappiness and your, your mental disorder. And from a perspective that by just being able to step out of it temporarily, you, in effect, you defuse it and you can come back into ordinary reality with these, with this sort of reconstructed, it's, it's really like taking the engine into the shop and, Hey, give me a tuna, you know, 